Okay, so in Europe, if you're going to sell there and you have some sort of physical product, you're probably, when I say probably, I really mean you are going to be responsible for what's called extended producer responsibility, EPR. So I'm excited to bring on Ellie Hansen from Avast Accounting to explain what on earth is this? How is it calculated? What do you got to do? What's the whole program how it ticks? So Ellie, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's lovely to be here. Awesome. Well, explain, what is EPR? Definitely. So I think that's the thing that's kind of on everybody's lips at the moment. So what the hell is this that's been knocking around um, since the beginning of the year, this year? So EPR, as you mentioned, stands for Extended Producer Responsibility. And although it's a, a new thing for um, sellers, it's a new thing for online marketplaces, it's, it's a new thing for Avask as well. It's it's not been um, it's not a new thing overall. It's been around for quite a long time. So it's what chemical tax in Sweden um, sort of became. And then it kind of flew under the radar for the last couple of decades. Um, so what it means is any goods that you're putting onto the market in the countries in which it's um, kind of applicable, um, you're then as a producer, um, then liable to take responsibility for the entire life cycle of the goods that you're putting onto these markets, including their eventual disposal. Um, so what this means by taking responsibility is you have to register for um, different registration numbers, depending on the goods that you're selling. And then also you'll be um, you'll be asked to pay these things called eco contributions, which is essentially an environmental friendly fun word for additional taxation in order to fund the sustainable and um, higher Pro, um, these the recycling of these goods into higher kind of secondary resources. Um, so the money's not going directly to the tax authorities. It's not going directly to the government. It's going to these organisations that govern each category in each country um, that actually do the reprocessing, the recycling. So the money's going back into the process. Got it. So the goal is whether we like it or not. Yeah. The money is going into basically the what to do with the product when it's done. And packaging too, because for a lot of folks, it's going to be really focused on packaging. Yeah, a hundred percent. And so it's only applicable kind of in the the French and German marketplaces at the moment, with the view for it to then expand um, across Europe in the next five to ten years or so. Because everywhere's got massive um, targets to hit for twenty thirty. Um, so kind of countries are getting behind this legislation and really pushing it amongst sellers. Although it, it might be seen as an additional kind of step and additional hurdle and making things more difficult for sellers to sell in Europe. Um, it's it's such a small percentage of kind of the money that you'll be making in Europe. It is just an additional hurdle to make selling more sustainable for the future. Well, that's such a politically correct way to phrase it. So, <laughs> all right. I, said it <laughs> I, I love it. You're, 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 you've got the uh, talking points down. So, all right. So, but just to understand, like, because I know people are thinking like, okay, this is additional tax, additional cost. That might be, you know, a huge percentage of your uh, selling price. Like, is this going to be comparable to that? Or like, how is this, comp- you know, calculated? So the, the way in which it's calculated is kind of, it's not at a set percentage like VAT. It's, it's very much on the products that you're selling. So it's, it's, you look at the quantity of goods that you're selling into either of these marketplaces, and then also the weights. So the weights is the most important bit. Um, so what we do is at the point of registration, you times the weight of the goods by um, the volume at which you're predicted to be selling into that marketplace within a given year. And then that is then calculated into a contribution amount. Um, so the way that it's split up is each organization receives data. So by organization, I mean, kind of like your EPR tax offices, each one of them governs a different category. Um, and that's how EPR is worked out. So in France, um, currently they have nine different categories and they've already started adding new ones onto the list. So it's it's worth keeping kind of your eye out um, for any additional information that's put out onto the internet. Um, so. France have kind of got packaging, batteries, electronics, tires, textiles, furniture, um, chemicals, and needles, that kind of thing. Um, so if your if your goods are kind of falling into any of those categories, um, then in France you will be liable. Um, it doesn't just cover people that are selling in those categories. So for EPR, it's relevant to you if um, in France or in Germany you're manufacturing a good if you're importing a good into either of those countries or if you're selling. 
So if your goods fall under any of those categories in France, you'll be needing to register for EPR. And then in Germany, they've gone for much more simple, much more minimalistic approach of just packaging batteries and electronics. Um, I think also another thing that's worth noting is if you've got goods, um, they might not necessarily just fall into one category. So an example of this is if I'm selling mobile phones in both countries, um, I'll need a packaging registration, an electronics registration, and a batteries registration for each country. So overall, I'm going to need six registration numbers um, in order to show that I'm compliant. Wow. So <laughs> there, there could be, so depending on the, the categories of the products you're in, you might have different registration numbers. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, going back to the, the, the is this going to make it cost prohibitive to sell in Europe? That's what probably a lot of people are thinking. Yeah, so um, what I would say is because it is based on kind of the weight um, of the goods, it's very much based on what you're selling. It's all relative to every single business. So um, just a couple of examples of this. Um, in France, they work slightly different to Germany. So I'll, I'll take packaging category kind of as a as a one that covers most people because everybody has a good that's packaged if you're selling in either of these countries. Mm -hmm. um, so with France, the way that it works is it's done at a component level. So for example, if I'm selling a face cream, um, I've got the pot, the face cream comes in, I've got the lid um, of the face cream, if it's got a protective foil, um, and then it also comes in a box. So overall, France would count that up as four different units. And then if I'm selling, um, multiple of them we'd look at how many units um, is in that product and then how many of them you're going to be selling in a given year and then what we do is we send that information to the authorities if i'm selling anything in france kind of under the ten thousand unit mark for the whole year i'm looking at around 80 euros um so for, for 80 euros for ten thousand units it's not actually a lot of money in terms of what maybe you pay in vat these these prices are very much dependent on kind of the volume at which you're selling in Germany, it's slightly different, and you might see a certain rise in um, the amount you might need to pay for Germany in comparison to France, just purely because Germany take into consideration the material of the packaging mm. and also the secondary packaging. So when it comes to the material, obviously, 50 kilograms of cardboard is going to be a lot cheaper than 50 kilograms of plastics, because in their eyes, it's easier to repurpose and recycle. And then they also take into consideration the box that your marketplace or your shipper is putting your good in in order to transport it to the customer. So that for Germany, that is the liability of the producer themselves. And whereas for France, they don't really care. So you might see that Germany, although it's still a very minimal price, you might see that it's slightly higher than France when you're looking at the two comparatively. Got it. OK, <laughs> so. Um, so it's good just to talk to someone to make sure you know all this. Now, what happens if someone says, ah, let's figure it out later? Um, what I would say is be very, very careful of deadlines. Um, so January the 1st of this year saw... Um, the of 2020, France, okay. Yeah, of 2020. So um, the deadlines for France coming into play um, for all of the categories, apart from the two newest ones, which chemicals and piercing medical equipment. Um, so what Amazon or other online marketplaces have kind of done in terms of that, they've said, oh, don't worry about it. We're very sorry for bringing this on you very late in the game. And um, so what they're doing, especially Amazon, they're covering um, they're covering sellers for the first year of compliance. But what they'll be doing is they'll, rem they'll be remitting that amount for the contributions out of seller central accounts and then potentially adding an additional administration fee on top of that as well. Oh, isn't that nice? Um, okay. So, so, you know, um, but I don't, after that kind of year is up, there will be the obligation to register yourselves. So what I would say is, although Amazon are being very kind in the sense that they're saying, oh, we'll do this on your behalf, there potentially are catches there and you might end up paying more doing it through a marketplace than you would if you were doing it independently. Um, for Germany, as of the 1st of July for 2022, um, anything that is non-compliant on Amazon Germany or going into Germany, you will have your listing removed. That's how marketplaces are kind of dealing with it. It's not monetary penalties, um, but I'd say that non-compliant listings being removed is kind of almost um, more detrimental to a business than actually having monetary penalties because it just means you can't sell. Um, right, exactly. So anything that's packaged from 1st of July, 2022, um, won't be able to remain on Amazon Germany in terms of um, selling. And then from January 
the 1st, 2023. Um, that's also the deadline for electronics and batteries in Germany as well. So as we kind of go through the rest of the year, there's definitely stuff to think about in terms of selling. Okay, got it. So there's a lot of moving pieces. And so depending on when someone watches this, we're recording this in mid-May 2020. Uh, you might be watching this after that July 1st deadline for Germany has already passed. So make sure you do this because you got to have the number in there. How long does it take to get the number? Um, at the moment, if you're looking at Germany um, for packaging, you can be up to up to a week. It's very, very quick. Um, and then for anything else in Germany, you're looking at about a 12 to 14 week at um, wait at the moment mm. just purely because they're very small organizations that were not equipped for this um, kind of volume and um, so although January 1st for electronics might seem a long time away um, it is definitely worth kind of trying to get those registrations in now whilst you're doing your packaging and then for France you're looking at around kind of two weeks three weeks four weeks depending on volume and the different organizations but these are kind of like not long wait times it's not kind of the wait times that you'll be waiting for VAT numbers um, it just means that sometimes with volume and smaller organizations you might have to wait a little bit longer. Okay so if they wanted to learn more where would they go? Um, so we have a team here at Avask that is able to assist you. We have a multilingual um, team that is able to assist in any language. So if we were to, if you were to go to um, Avask, um, if you type in Avask EPR onto Google, <laughs> you can find all the information about EPR. We also have a green transition service here at Avask to help with all environmental legislations. So if you were to go onto our website and just um, search for green transitions, you can find all of the environmental legislations that might be impacted you in the next couple of years we'll, we'll, we'll save everybody from the searches we'll just have the links down below perfect thank you very much <laughs> awesome thank you so much ellie thank you kevin